time to learn about the premolars, starting with the maxillary first premolar. There are two maxillary first premolars, the right and the left, and those are numbered 5 and 12 using the universal numbering system. Premolars in general are located between the anterior teeth, which we've already learned about, check out these videos, and the molars. There are four types of premolars, the maxillary first, maxillary second, mandibular first, and mandibular second. Premolars are sometimes called bicuspids, meaning two cusps, but that's wrong. Not wrong that they're called bicuspids. Wrong that one should consider all premolars to have two cusps because there is a premolar, not the one we're talking about today, that has three cusps. The maxillary first premolar is the largest of all the premolars and is located distal to the canine. The maxillary first premolar has two cusps and two roots. The function of the maxillary first premolar is to chew and grind food, support the cheeks, and maintain the vertical dimension of the mouth. The maxillary first premolar is going to form from four lobes, three buccal, one lingual. The maxillary first premolar erupts at ages 10 to 11 years old, and the root completes about three years later at 12 to 13 years old. The initial sign of calcification is at 1.5 to 1.7 years old, or I just remember it as between one and two years old. Let's look at the maxillary first premolar from the facial. The general shape is a trapezoid with the smaller base at the cervix and the larger base at the occlusal. The maxillary first premolar does have a cusp, making it almost a pentagon shape. The crown is shorter than the maxillary canine, and the root is shorter than the maxillary canine. The maxillary first premolar has two cusps, but because the buccal cusp is larger than the lingual cusp, from the facial you can only see one of them. The cusp tip is positioned slightly distal to the middle, and the mesial cusp slope is larger than the distal cusp slope, which is unique to this tooth. The maxillary first premolar is the only permanent tooth where the distal cusp slope is smaller than the mesial cusp slope. And these cusp slopes might have notches. Looking at the mesial outline, it's convex at the contact and then gets very concave cervical to the contact. The contact on the mesial is located in the middle one third. The outline of the distal is more broadly curved over the contact and more straight cervical to the contact. The position of the contact on the distal is more cervical than the mesial, but still located in the middle third. Looking at the facial surface, there is a buccal ridge, very similar to the labial ridge of the canine, running from cusp tip to the cervix, and is formed from the middle developmental lobe, and there will be depressions on either side. There are two roots to the maxillary first premolar, but once again, from this angle, we can only see one because the buccal root is larger and longer than the lingual root and the roots are shorter than the maxillary canine's roots. Now let's flip this tooth over and look at it from the lingual. From the lingual we can see both of the cusps and both of the roots because the lingual cusp is shorter or narrower than the buccal cusp and that lingual root is shorter and narrower than the buccal root, making everything visible from the lingual. The cusp tip of the lingual cusp is mesial to the center and that lingual surface is quite smooth and spheroidal, though sometimes you can see a lingual ridge. This tooth is going to taper buccal to lingual, meaning the mesial distal dimensions of the buccal are wider than the mesial distal dimensions of the lingual. Now let's look at those proximal views. This is the mesial, this is the distal. The outline of the crown is trapezoid shaped with the larger base at the cervix and the smaller base at the occlusal. We can see those two cusps with the buccal being taller by about one millimeter and the cusp tips are confined to the outline of the root trunk, meaning there is no tilt to the crown like we'll end up seeing with the mandibular premolars. The buccal outline is convex with the height of contour in the cervical one third. The lingual outline is also convex with the height of contour in the middle one third. The mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge are horizontal and part of the occlusal plane. The mesial marginal ridge is more occlusal and the distal marginal ridge is more cervical. The CEJ or cervical line is less curved than the anterior teeth, but the mesial is still more curved than the distal. There are two roots, a buccal and a lingual, that bifurcate or split at least halfway down the length of the roots apically. There's a developmental depression on the mesial and the distal with the mesial being more pronounced. Two features unique to the mesial of the maxillary first premolar. Number one, the mesial developmental depression. 
This depression is cervical to the contact area and can extend and even join the root depression. This anatomical feature makes it harder to scale and harder to clean, and you have to be aware of it during a root canal to prevent perforation. The second anatomical feature unique to the mesial of the maxillary first premolar is the mesial marginal developmental groove. This is a groove that crosses over the mesial marginal ridge from the occlusal surface to the mesial surface. Now let's look at this tooth from the occlusal. The outline is a hexagon with the tip at that prominent buccal ridge and the sides at those marginal ridges, distal marginal ridge, mesial marginal ridge. The tooth is significantly wider buccal lingually than mesial distally, and there is a tapering towards the lingual, with the tooth being wider mesial distally towards the buccal compared to the lingual. We can see our two cusps again, with the buccal being larger than the lingual cusp, and that lingual cusp is offset to the mesial. Now let's look at the ridges we can see from the occlusal. Now, I don't want you to panic when you see a diagram of all of these ridges. Odds are there's not really going to be many test questions on this. And you can go through these ridges logically. Here's what I mean. The first two ridges you should know, mesial marginal ridge, distal marginal ridge. Old news, you've seen that with the anterior teeth. The mesial marginal ridge and distal marginal ridge are the mesial and distal outlines of the tooth. Unlike those anterior teeth, they, on the maxillary first premolar, they're positioned horizontally. Now, for the other ridges, we're just gonna look at each cusp one at a time. Each cusp is shaped like a pyramid. So there'll be four ridges per cusp that you should know. Let's look at the buccal cusp first. We know that there should be four ridges we know. Like a compass, they're gonna be named after which position they're pointing in. The ridge going towards the distal is the distal buccal cusp ridge. The ridge going towards the mesial is the mesial buccal cusp ridge. The ridge going towards the buccal is the buccal cusp ridge of the buccal cusp. And the ridge going lingually is the lingual cusp ridge of the buccal cusp. There are some alternative names for that buccal and lingual cusp ridges though. The buccal cusp ridge of the buccal cusp, just the buccal ridge. You saw that from the facial. The lingual cusp ridge of the buccal cusp is just the buccal triangular ridge. The triangular ridge is a ridge that goes from the cusp tip to the central groove. Now, let's look at the lingual cusp. Once again, four ridges per cusp, based on the directions like a compass. The ridge going towards the distal is the distal lingual cusp ridge. The ridge going towards the mesial is the mesial lingual cusp ridge. The ridge going towards the lingual is the lingual cusp ridge of the lingual cusp. And the ridge going towards the buccal is the buccal cusp ridge of the lingual cusp. Alternative names for that buccal and lingual cusp ridges. Lingual cusp ridge, just the lingual ridge that we might have seen from the lingual view. Buccal cusp ridge is the lingual triangular ridge. The triangular ridge is a ridge that goes from the cusp tip to the central groove. Now, when we have two triangular ridges that meet each other, that's a transverse ridge. And now you know all the ridges, four per cusp. Alternative names are those preferred names and the marginal ridges. Now let's look at the grooves. The general shape of the grooves of the maxillary first premolar is two sideways peace signs or a bow tie. There's a central groove running between the two cusps, just mesial to the distal marginal ridge running to just distal to the mesial marginal ridge where it's going to join the mesial marginal developmental groove, which we saw already. It's a groove that's going to cross the mesial marginal ridge from the occlusal surface and continue down the mesial surface. There's also going to be the distal buccal developmental groove at the distal end and the mesial buccal developmental groove at the mesial end. There might be supplementary or secondary grooves, but that's pretty rare. There will be two pits and that's just where grooves meet each other. We got our mesial pit and our distal pit. Fossa for the maxillary first premolar, we're going to have two fossa, the mesial triangular fossa and the distal triangular fossa. These are gonna be two triangular shaped depressions. They're gonna be located where the grooves are branching with the base of our triangles along the marginal ridges and the sides of our triangle following the grooves to those mesial and distal pits. The distal triangular fossa is gonna be larger or the same size as the mesial triangular fossa. Our maxillary first premolar is gonna have two roots and two canals. One canal per root. A variation of our maxillary first premolar is that sometimes it's going to only have one root. And when that happens, it still has two canals in it. 
And just like that, you are an expert on the Maxillary first premolar. Stay tuned because our next video will be on the Maxillary second premolar. Until then, go ahead and check this playlist of other dental anatomy videos. Happy studying. Bye.